Okay, shall we start? Um, with us, we have John Ruhiu. John has been working in the mm -hmm. MIFOS and Finite community since 2014 as a consultant. And he has successfully implemented a number of projects in Africa and experienced firsthand the power of open source where organizations that will otherwise not afford to automate operations and get world-class software thanks to the Finerite community. So John is going to talk now, is going to help us understand and, and, and guide us through the process of integrating the accounting uh, of Finerite with uh, the Odoo ERP. So without further ado, the floor is yours. John, good luck. So thanks, uh, thanks Javier, um, and thanks everyone for uh, for coming. Um, let me start by sharing my screen and the presentation that I've prepared for this. Uh, just let me know when you can see my screen. Javier, can you see it's my screen? There. Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay, so um, so I'll just go through the uh, presentation and just uh, explain how we did this. Um, starting off with um, the why we we decided to do this uh, and explain exactly the steps we took and uh, basically share our experience uh, in this journey. So as, as Javier said, um, I've been in the community since 2014. Uh, currently, I live in Nairobi. Um, my passion really is just designing digital solutions, but solutions generally, but I think uh, digital solutions happen to be very easy for, uh, to implement uh, because of the cost implications and all that. Uh, but generally, I'm very passionate about designing solutions. Um, currently, I work with FITA, and I really, really love it. I love the culture and all that. Um, yeah, so we'll go straight into, into our journey of uh, integrating uh, FINERAP with ODU uh, and starting off with why, uh, why we decided to do this. So a bit of history. Um, so how we came about this is, uh, one of our customers requested we extend uh, the accounting feature of the accounting module in Finerac and Mifos. So they gave us like a, a huge document with so many requirements that um, uh, required very extensive changes to the platform. And so we explored and actually um, looked at different options. One of them was actually to extend Finerac and Mifos. But after some uh, research and th we thought about it and we decided uh, why don't we look around if there's a, another platform that really is strong in terms of accounting and finance uh, and if it is possible to integrate that. So we um, reviewed the number and we settled on Odoo and for the reasons that you're going to look at um, shortly. So with this integration, we were able to get pretty much the best of both worlds. Uh, because with Finerat, you're able to um, really get a lot of features that help you in terms of banking and um, running a bank. Uh, but in terms of accounting and finance, especially, it's not, it's not that great. Uh, because anyway, it wasn't really built uh, to be an accounting or a finance system. It's a core banking application or a core banking system. Um, and on the other hand, if you look at um, if you look at Odoo on the other side, um, it is very strong in terms of accounting and all that, but you can't really use it um, to run a bank uh, essentially. So um, starting off with Finerat, um, Finerat, as I said, is very very good in terms of uh, core banking. Um, you can run pretty much. Um, a lot of banking operations can be run on Finerat. Things like customer onboarding and management. Uh, you can configure and run your savings products, fixed deposit, recurring uh, deposits. 
you can also do loan uh, credit and loans and all that. You can do that very, very well with, uh, with Fineract. Um, some enhancements may be required here and there, but um, pretty much out of the box, you get a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things for free. But on the other side, <clears throat> uh, in terms of finance, um, if you're looking for something that is um, uh, a bit, uh, goes beyond the basic features and especially things that don't have to do with um, customer related accounting. So things like <clears throat> the debits and credits that happen when a customer deposits money into their savings account, opens a fixed deposit account, um, they make deposit into the into the recurring deposits. And they take out a loan, make repayments. If you're looking for something that um, that goes beyond that, whether in terms of um, things like payroll, um, even in terms of reporting, um, you will either have to extend Pineract to cover those operations, or build something else altogether, or integrate with something like Odoo. So in terms of uh, core banking operations, it's very, very good. But in terms of finance, it is not. So in terms of finance operations, in terms of reporting, reconciliations, all those things, um, it doesn't do very well. So Fineract, if you look at, if you think about it, is like, like in any organization, and, and, and the bank specifically, there are many different stakeholders that you're trying to serve. So one of them will be the people in there core operations of, of a bank, these are loan officers, um, people who are dealing with um, savings, opening um, customer accounts and all that. So those people are very happy with Interact and Mifos. But then um, in the back office, you have the finance department who are looking for something that can help them with bank reconciliations, can help them with uh, things like um, investing the excess liquidity that they may have from time to time, actually knowing how much money do we have in excess so we can uh, invest this and all that. So all those guys are usually not happy with Fineract. So uh, they need something else. And so from our research, uh, we came to settle on Odoo um, for a number of reasons. So one of them is that um, Odoo is, is quite rich uh, has a rich set of ERP modules and apps. Uh, so just to give you a taste of that, uh, so I have an, um, an Odoo instance that we set up here. Um, so I hope you can still see my screen. So um, one Odoo is also open source, just like Fineract, uh, meaning you can take it, extend it, um, the licensing may be, may be a bit different from Fineract, uh, but still it's open source, so you can do uh, a few things uh, that you can't really do with a, with a commercial um, platform or application. So, of, <clears throat> so out of the box, you really get a lot of uh, um, features and modules, applications, and all that. So like here, I've just installed, like these are about, about, 10, applica uh, about 10 applications. And you can install more. If I clicked on these apps here, it will open another screen where I can actually install quite a number of other applications. So uh, what I'm saying is that Odoo has so many uh, features that any person in finance um, would want. And specifically when it comes to accounting, uh, just to show you how, um, how extensive it is. Um, uh, if you just look at this, you're able to manage your assets. You can manage transfer of assets and stuff like that. You can also do reconciliation. You can manage your purchases and sales. Um, you can also, um, in terms of reporting, it has quite, quite an extensive set of uh, reports that you really don't get uh, in, in Pineract. So that's why, I say in terms of um, uh, its capabilities, it is it is quite good uh, as far as finance is concerned. Uh, but when it comes to core banking operations, you can't really run core banking operations on, on Odoo. Um, I've seen some people use, especially in, in, in Kenya, in Africa, use um, accounting softwares to try and run uh, small uh, banking operations. 
like circles. Uh, an example of this would be QuickBooks, where they um, capture like savings accounts and all that in QuickBooks uh, and all that. But usually it becomes very cumbersome and, and all that because it, like these applications are not really designed to, to run bank of, uh, banking operations. So, but when you bring these two things together, you get some uh, synergy. Uh, because on the one hand, you have Tineract, which is very, very good with um, core banking operations, like, as I said, customer onboarding, uh, savings, loans, and all that. And then on this other uh, side, you have uh, an application or a platform that is very, very good with um, ERP stuff, and especially finance things, things like asset, uh, registering assets uh, and managing that, like amortization, on uh, depreciation and stuff like that. Uh, something else that it is very good at is managing your payroll uh, and also has very, very many reports that a finance person would be interested in. So when you bring these two things together, uh, then you able, you're able to satisfy the needs of the two, two stakeholders at least. On this uh, guy, uh, on this, on one, on one hand, you have, you're able to satisfy the needs of they operate the core banking operations people and on this other side you're able to um, satisfy the needs of the finance people and people like ceos and all that these are these people would be interested in um uh in a just with with a click of a button they can run um a balance sheet and 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 trial balance and stuff like that um and the trial balance and the balance sheet they are looking for is is unlike what we have in Finera, which only covers things that have to do with um, banking operations, like savings, as I said, loans and all that. Um, <clears throat> sure, if you're running a small operation, it is okay, you can run like your expenses, you can, you, know, you can post your payroll and stuff like that using the general entry, um, general entry module or feature. But that from experience is, 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 is um, open to abuse people can just post journals into using that and end up you end up losing money or records are not accurate uh, but with them um, um, with odoo uh, you're able to get like a full balance sheet that covers beyond the core banking operations it also covers all these other aspects of any institution um yeah so that's why the combination becomes very very powerful um so on to how we did it. So I've just explained why we did it and how we came to that decision, but how did we actually do it? Um, so we made the following changes to uh, Fineract and we also worked with an Odoo, uh, um, with an Odoo partner who is really good in, with, with, with Odoo. So they are able to make changes to it and all that to make it compatible with Fineract, although the changes were quite minimal. Um, so the changes we made as far as Finerac is concerned is as follows. So the first thing we did is we made changes to Finerac such that whatever a customer is created in, in Finerac, um, some basic details are sent over to Odoo. So things like their name and um, customer ID, uh, those are sent over to Odoo. Um, and the reason for that is you need at least some basic information in Odoo so that when you say, uh, running some of these reports, uh, you're able to actually um, uh, tag uh, customer details in those uh, special things like the general ledger reports and all that. You may want to tag and know which customer actually made uh, this uh, deposit or this withdrawal and all that. So we made changes to Finerat uh, that automatically when a customer is created, we send over some of the details to Odoo. Uh, the other things we did is similar to customer details. Whatever I, um, a savings account is activated in Finerat, we send over some of the details uh, of the savings account to Odoo as well. And these are actually tagged to the customer that we, we just created here. Uh, the other thing we did is we uh, made changes such that whatever a, a journal entry is made in, uh, in Finerat, um, that same journal entry also is posted into Odoo. Um, so we really didn't do away with the journal entries in, in Finerat. We make we, we make journal entries in Finerat, and then we 
push over a copy of that journal entry into Odoo. So you kind of have redundancies. Just in case Odoo is not available, the operations don't actually stop. You're able to continue. Um, also, when manual general, uh, general entries are made in Fedoract, the same um, are pushed over to Odoo as well. Um, um, so something else, as I mentioned up here, is that um, uh, Fedoract will not stop working if Odoo is not available. If one reason or the other, the instance uh, running Odoo is, is, is unavailable, or the connection is, 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 uh, is not working and all that, Fedoract will continue to work. But in order to, to ensure that uh, uh, we don't have discrepancies between uh, the journal entries or the reports in, in Fideract and in Odoo, uh, in those cases, the journal entries are going to be marked as not pushed or not posted to Odoo. So we, we added a plug in the journal entries table that is just going to mark it as not posted yet. And then uh, once Odoo is available, then uh, there are some jobs that run in the background and we'll attempt to continue to push uh, those uh, journal entries over to Odoo um, until they're successful. Once they're su successful, then they are marked as pushed over. Um, and the same thing for all the other things that we need as well. So we need customer details. We need also savings accounts details. So those as well, if there's a failure, uh, those will also be marked as not pushed over. And then once Odoo is available again, those customer details and account details will be uh, pushed uh, over to Odoo. Um, and one last thing that we did is um, with this integration, uh, in order to have uh, to achieve harmony, uh, especially in the chart of accounts between Odoo and and Fineract, uh, we disabled the management of chart of accounts in Fineract. So once you, you say that now we want to put what we, the integration is active because you can activate and deactivate it and at any given time. Um, once the, the integration is active and has been marked as, as such in the configurations, um, we completely disable the management of the chart of accounts in Fineract. So that screen is not available. So uh, the chart of accounts will only be managed from uh, the Odoo side. So this means when you want to create a, a new uh, a new GL account, uh, you go to the chart of accounts feature in Odoo, create it, and then it is pushed over to uh, uh, to Fineract, and then it is stored. And then of course once it is stored, you can go ahead and uh, map it um, in the products and all that and then of course now once general entries start happening they'll be pushed over to to what do so that's why we, we we made this last change here where we uh made it such that interact is able to accept um chart of accounts uh whenever they are created updated disabled deleted uh from all the side and so those are those are the changes that we made um uh yeah so those are the changes we made and um the integration has been working very well um so from my experience uh some of the pitfalls i would say you would need to avoid it with, to go in this direction would be uh one um i think if you attended yesterday's um talk uh that frank gave um one of the things we realized is if uh you have you're running a big operation or a big um organization a big bank um uh, one of the things that grows very very fast in Fineract is the journal entries so imagine you have like say 10 million or 30 million journal entries um and there is this job that will keep running from time to time to check are there any journal entries that um I have not be, have not been pushed over to Odoo, and then it will attempt to push them over to Odoo. So it ha if it has to run through all those journal entries to identify and then start pushing, uh, this will start affecting them now the normal operations of the of of the bank. So from my experience, um, our advice would be that um, if you're going to do this, uh, push your journal entries from a read-only replica. 
uh, don't do it from the live database because uh, it will end up affecting operations. The other thing is um, don't use or don't run your jobs in their main instance. Um, again, from yesterday's talk uh, that Frank gave, we've at least as fit managed to separate the instances. Now we have three instances. One instance for running, uh, the main instance for running, just receiving and, and, and responding to API calls. And then there is this other one that runs uh, reports. And then there's the, another instance that run job, runs jobs. So our, our, our advice would be, um, don't run those jobs that are pushing over journal entries uh, in the main instance, run them in a separate uh, job. Because again, for the same reason, if it has to go through all those records, uh, it will end up affecting your operations if you're doing it in the main, the main instance. And then, then uh, one last thing, uh, there could be many, but these are the things we've identified so far. Uh, you need to educate uh, the users, especially the finance department, not to duplicate operations. As I said, um, things like the chart of accounts management, um, somebody may forget that this chart of accounts is now supposed to be managed from Odoo and not in Fineract. So they maybe find a way to go into um, uh, Fineract and then open the chart of accounts page and then start making changes there. Those changes will probably not end up in, in Odoo. So you end up with uh, data that, that, that has a bit of discrepancy and so the communication uh, is not happening properly. Uh, so just proper education is required uh, in order to avoid this duplication of operations and all that. So those are the pitfalls that I would say you need to avoid uh, so far. Um, yeah, but that's from my experience. Maybe in your own experience, you'll identify others. Um, yeah, and uh, that's my presentation on how we uh, how we did uh, the Finerat and Odoo um, Odoo integration. So I welcome any questions that you may have. Hello. So if anybody has any question, please share on the chat. Oh, yeah, we are using the chat, not the Q&As. There's no questions there. There's a question from James. Um, did you have to create a kind of top level orchestration of processes? Mm, not sure if I understand the question. Um, is it possible okay. to unmute people's mics so they can ask the questions or it's not? No, no, it's not. Just uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> maybe, James, you can reformulate. I think that. Um, what, what I understand is, okay, which system triggers the APIs? So how do you orchestrate between Odoo and MIF and FinRact, MIFOS? Yeah, so um, how we, we've done it is um, the system that is the originator of the, of, of, of the data is the one to initiate the, the API. So like for most of, uh, the operations, it's Fineract that will be the originator of the data. So it's Fineract making API calls to Odoo uh, in most of the cases. But in one case, that is the chart of accounts management. Uh, it's Odoo that is initiating the, uh, the data. And so the originating the data, sorry. So it's the one to make the API call to Fineract and then Fineract will make the necessary, take the necessary action. Okay, any other question? I 
There is a James. Do you track the API events separately? Um, that's a pretty technical question. So I, as I said, I design solutions. But with us today, I believe we have. Let me see. We have uh, Deepika with us who actually did mm. the work. So Deepika, I don't know if you want to type in the answer to that question. Okay, so while will leave you guys answering. I don't know if there's any other question on... on the track. Um, okay. So how can get the chance? How we how can we get the changes or concept contributed back to Finerac project? Big question, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I how do. we contribute um, back this to the Finerac? Um from from a design perspective, I think the changes are very um, highly compatible with 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 Finerat because all you need to do is uh, turn on a flag or a configuration if you want to um, uh, use always your accounting thing um, and if you turn it off your operations will still continue to run to run to run okay so I would say the changes we made are very safe. Uh, they're pretty safe to contribute contribute back to the community. Okay. <clears throat> um, so maybe we can take this on the BOF, BOF session later today. Uh, maybe it's, uh, it's not too late for you, John, to join us at 2030 uh, UTC, so we can discuss on the births of births of feather of a feather uh, how we can just contribute back this. If not, James can help us uh, help you with that 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 guidelines on contributing back the the software. So if there is no more questions, um, I believe the next session is going to be uh, 510 UTC, 1710 UTC, and it's going to be open G2P one year on. So uh, I we have now the, the lunch break, kind of, so for some uh, for me, it's a lunch, but not, not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone is dinner, like John, or someone else is, yeah, it is, is dinner breakfast. Over, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then we we can see we we'll see you there. Uh, the the event session will be open at seventeen five UTC. So see you there, and thank you, John, for your presentation. Yeah, thanks, and thanks everyone for coming. Right. It's a big panel. Yes, James, it's a big panel. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.